Testing one, two, testing one, two. This is Todd Palin. Uh, the date is December 12th, and I'm dictating a sample chapter of my autobiography into this cassette deck as per instruction of Daniel Gorston over at Simon & Schuster. Apparently this chapter will determine the saleability of my book, although there's no doubt in my mind that I'm putting together a pretty kick-ass book that no one's going to want to shut off. All right, Daniel said I shouldn't focus too much on my early years because that stuff's boring and nobody cares. God, I hate that guy. Total worm. You can just feel the worminess just like dripping off of him like some kind of stink or something. Kind of like the stink coming off of old man Nick Lane now that I think about it. Although that putt smells more like Ben Gay mixed with tartar sauce. God, that's one thing about the election I'm glad is over. I never have to fake my way through another dumb conversation with that munch ever again. All he ever talks about is Arizona and how he got to stay for free for five years in a Hilton in the Orient. Must be nice. You know, we actually went to Arizona when Sarah was first considering running. Between you and me, that place needs to be bombed. Seriously, nothing to do. It's just strip mall after strip mall. And those picker bushes, what are those things? They will kill you, I'm serious. I actually asked McLean if there was a paintball course around, and he goes, yeah, there was one, but it went out of business a couple years ago. It's like, whatever happened to the basic necessities? A child needs paintball. Although, in Arizona's favor, several decent strip clubs. Yeah, I caught bone a couple times. Overall, though, I hope I never set foot in that turd factory ever again. I gotta say, one thing that does bum me out about the election being over... It's how fast all those perks sure went away. Look, let's not mix words, okay? I knew those two were going to tank that election. Nobody wanted McLean. You want someone you could hang out with, you know? Someone who's cool. Not someone you may have to resuscitate at any moment. And McLean, so square. Oh, my God. He used to wear this stupid bomber jacket on the plane and had this, this Planet Hollywood uh, logo on the back. So he'd walk up and down the aisles giving the, giving the thumbs up like he, like he was cool or something. And I, I'd always say, Senator, you look just like the new funsy. And he'd give me this big old smile and he'd give me the thumbs up even, even higher. And I kept saying funsy instead of Fonzy over and over again. And then eventually, of course, he starts calling himself funsy. And I'm pretty sure I heard him call himself fuzzy at one point. What a dunce munch. I'm not even going to get into how creepy he got with Sarah. Although I know people would love to hear that when they listen to my book. There was this one time we were campaigning. Some dopey state like, I don't know, Idaho or something. And he starts going on about his hot tub back, back in the desert and how good it feels after a long day of campaigning. Helps you really relax to get in that hot tub. And then he asks Sarah if she's ever been in a hot tub. First of all, dumb effing question. What makes you think a POA like Sarah wouldn't know how to rock a hot tub, okay? Trust me, she knows how. We tub it on many occasions. Many. But it's like she's going to get in her one piece with this old creep oogling her in the hot tub? I don't think so. No effing way, all right? You probably have to worry more about him dropping one in the tub. But, man, I do miss those perks. The security guys were so awesome. They would do whatever you told them to do. And it was so clear that they hated it. I used to make them wrap themselves in toilet paper and then go get me pizza at Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh my god, speaking of food, those shrimp cocktails they would give you? Amazing. Oh, I could sure go for one right now. That cocktail sauce with just a hint of horseradish. You know, if you put too little horseradish all on the shrimp, it sucks ass. But then if you put too much on it, then your mouth feels like it's on fire. And I hate that. There are a few things in life that are worse than your mouth feeling like it's on fire. I can't really think of any right now, but that's... Yeah, that's probably the biggest one for me that I hate the most. The, the, uh, God, I'm hungry. Oh, I don't think there's anything to eat here. I should probably keep at this. I know uh, i got to give you the juicy stuff, right? I know I'm not going to sell this thing if I just keep talking about shrimp cocktails and McLean getting the squirts in a hot tub. What's a good story from the campaign trail? Oh, oh uh, when Sarah was on SNL. That was cool. First of all, I gotta tip me hat to the cast. I had not seen the show 
in I don't know how many years, just because I, I don't know, I just figured nobody was going to do it better than Denny Dillon, so why bother? But I got to say, there's some pretty funny dudes on that show. That one guy, what's his name? Um, does the voices. Um, Bill Hater, yes, he's good. I was actually hoping he'd work up something about me, but the uh, the other dude did, did me uh, in that rap song. He was uh, jumping around like me. Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, ba ba ba. What is it? It's um, uh, the dude who plays one of the two a holes uh, with the with the chick I want to tap. Oh, fudge. What is his name? It's um. Oh, it's gonna drive me nuts. Oh, wait, give me a second. No, I can't remember it. Um, anyway, what happened at SNL that's good for the book? Oh, when we were backstage, I ran into that singer, uh, is it, it's Adele, right? Yeah, yeah. And she was the musical guest. British chick. Kind of like Amy Winehouse, but chunkier. Um, so anyway, I'm at the craft service table with her, and I'm loading up on all these pre-made cheese and cracker thingies. And she comes by, and I try to make some small talk, you know. Like, how's it going? How do you like it uh, in America? Well, I don't even remember what I said, but I ask her if she wants one of these cheese and cracker things. And she goes, no thanks. And she turns and she walks away. I just thought it was really rude. It's like, who put a stick up your ass? I was just offering you a snack. I wasn't trying to chew you or anything. Although, I gotta say, if, if she was game, I, I could have definitely been talked into... Uh, some frontal or backal groping, if you know what I mean. And this guy, Josh Brolin, what a dink. He was the host. We're all in the hallway at one point, and Sarah's just uh, finishing up her spot, and this guy comes off stage after doing a skit or something, and he stands there, he's like, he's sizing me up or something, like, like he wants to throw down? I mean, what the hell has this guy done that's any good except for, like, Goonies and Mimic? Where do people like this get off? This, this ego crap, you know? tell you one thing, things like that could learn something from my man Ted Nugent. You know, there really hasn't been a lot that's good to come from this whole thing, the election. Check it out, my wife got humiliated, my daughter had to show what a mattress back she is, and I had to be all chummy and fake friendly with McLean, that dink Milt Rombley, and these other jerks on the campaign trail. Some of the worst people you'd ever want to meet, total mouth breathers. Oh my God, there was this one guy at this campaign stop. Jason Sudeikis. That's it, that's it, that's it. I knew I'd remember it. I totally knew I'd remember it. Anyway, Uncle Ted. I gotta say, hanging out with that cat, maybe the only decent thing to come out of the whole election. But I gotta say, that guy is one sick MF. We, we were hunting a couple weeks ago out by his place in Michigan. And I go, Ted, do you ever wonder what it would be like to hunt a human? And he turns and he looks at me and he goes, oh, I've done it. And I was like, what? And he goes into this story about how he was on this safari for humans just outside of Houston. And he even said he's got the head of a guy mounted on the wall of his studio, right above the handwritten lyrics to Wang Dang Sweet Boon Tang. He says it inspires him to get down and rock harder when he picks up the mother axe. Look, I don't know if he was pulling my leg or not. I really don't think he was. I mean, he's a really cool guy. And I gotta say, the more I think about it, he's a really scary guy. <laughs> but not in the same way that McLean is. That guy's just boring crazy. Truthfully, though, that doesn't mean I don't want to rock the sheets with this old lady. I'm talking Shemaine, Ted's wife, not uh, McLean's wife. Yeah, it would not be a bummer to be in a triage with Shemaine and, uh, and Sarah, that's for sure. But, you know, I really don't think Ted would like that at all. And, and I'm such a huge fan of his. I, I couldn't do that to him. After all, he signed a copy of his album Crave Man for me. That's probably one of the greatest achievements of my life, getting him to sign that record for me and then me hanging it on my garage wall. Man, that's got to be enough to make this thing saleable, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to hear me tell these stories when they buy my book? It's some pretty tantalizing stuff.
And I didn't even get into the time that I caught Sean Hannity working his own poll on Air Force One. Uh, all right. Um, let me know when I get my book deal. Late. <laughs>